Hey everyone, I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about reading comprehension strategies. We should be learning these in late elementary school. However, it's something that people struggle with throughout middle, high school, and at the college level, especially when reading difficult words. I'm going to look at an article and we're just going to look at the very beginning together and I'm going to give you some suggestions of what I would be doing if I were reading this and how I would follow along in it. Very first thing, never jump right into the reading. Always read the title. It's going to set you up for what you are reading about. Any textbook reading, article, poetry, your title is going to be your friend and your helper. Immediately, I look at a brother lost, and I think about it. What comes to mind? Did a child get lost and they can't find him? Did someone pass away? Is it that aspect of loss? Is it mentally they're lost and not there? Whatever thoughts come to my mind are great. It doesn't even have to connect to what the story is about. With your brain thinking about it, you're automatically now reading for a purpose to find out if you're correct or not. And that's very important to retaining what you read. I then read the little sentence that it gives underneath it. This is kind of like a hook for this article. They gave you a little extra information if you're scrolling through articles to try to get you to want to read this. It says, Jay traded his parents' home for the street. His sister can't save him without losing herself. Okay, that gave me some background. So not a little kid who's lost, but instead someone who's choosing to have a life on the streets and his sister can't seem to help him without losing herself. Always look at the year, March, April, 2011. Okay, so it's still fairly present time, um, but if it was 1980s or if it was in the 1920s, it's going to be a different setting. It's really going to have a different background. You always want to think if technology is available, if um, there's a war going on, all these things play into your setting. So don't ignore that basic information that you get at the start of any reading. First paragraph. Like any New Yorker, I was no stranger to homeless people. Okay, setting, New York. We are in New York. I passed by them on my way to the shiny glass tower where I worked for a glossy women's magazine. The older lady perched atop a milk crate in the subway station. The man curled up in a dirty sleeping bag and clutching a stuffed animal. They were unfortunate ornaments of the city, unlucky in ways I never really considered. Okay, so in here we get some context clues. Um, subway station. Glass towers. Homeless people. These are all putting us together as in, I'm going to use these clues to assume they're in New York City. The very last line is what I would annotate. I would underline this. I would highlight it, put a star next to it. Whatever your strategy for note taking is, this line should stand out. They were unfortunate ornaments of the city, unlucky in ways I never really considered. It kind of makes us think, okay, well, in what ways are they unlucky? It's something that we're hoping to find out more about as we read this article. Um, and we should think about it. This is kind of a point where you want to kind of analyze the sentence. What do they mean by ornaments? Why are these homeless people being compared to these ornaments that are I'm picturing hanging on a Christmas tree? Thoughts that come to my mind might be, well, ornaments are scattered all over the tree. You never know where you're going to find them. Just like there's these unfortunate people who are homeless and scattered all over the city. Ornaments are very fragile. They might crack and break. Maybe she's comparing these people to being in a very fragile state. Um, you want to start thinking about those things because everything you think about will help you as you continue to read. It's very important to um, have connections to go back to. The more predictions you make, the more you try to guess what's being said, the more your brain is going to look for the answers. And the more your brain looks for answers, the more you retain what you are reading. So taking time to do these things will help ensure that you might have to only read it one time. Whereas if you don't do this, you might be spacing off and only getting parts of it and going back and reading it a second or a third time. Um, as far as entertaining itself goes, it's a personal preference. Some people underline, some people highlight, some people put little notes on the side. I tend to do a little bit of all of it. 
Um, if something stands out and I'm not sure what it says, I put a question mark. If there's a little section that makes perfect sense, I might put a check and sum it up in one word. Um, there's many different ways to annotate. You do what works best for you, but you always have to question yourself when reading. You can make sure that you're following a little bit of um, comprehension checklist and make sure that you're following along and not just understanding for face value, but also making connections when needed. All right, have a great day.